Hey, it's your pal Mike Shea from Sly Flourish with a special video in which I'm going to talk about using Notion for lazy dungeon mastering. I did a video on this before, but it was kind of long and, and meandered all over the place. And I thought it'd be more useful if I had a video that was very specifically talking about how to use the tool Notion for lazy dungeon mastering, how to use the Sly Flourish lazy dungeon master template. This show, like all of the work of Sly Flourish, is brought to you by the patrons of Sly Flourish. You too can become a patron of Sly Flourish by going to patreon.com slash Sly Flourish. Patrons help support shows like this. They help pay for all of the bandwidth and all of the tools and all of the uh, other things that I need in order to keep the Sly Flourish empire alive. So if you are a patron of Sly Flourish, I highly appreciate your support. So Notion is a tool a lot like Microsoft OneNote. If you're familiar with Microsoft OneNote, you will be somewhat familiar with Notion. It is a, it is a notebook app. I'm not going to get too much into Notion itself. I'm not going to give a tutorial of it. Uh, instead, if you are not used to Notion, what I recommend is uh, signing up for an account. It's very easy to do. It's a free tool. It doesn't require, you don't, you, there's, a, there's a paid version, but we don't really need the paid version for what we're using, uh, for what we're doing here. And uh, in the lower right-hand corner is a question mark that is always there. And you can click this question mark and you can go to the help and support guide. And the help and support guide has all kinds of tutorials, both in text and in video. They have a whole series of YouTube videos that talk all about how to use all of the different functions of Notion. The lazy template itself, there are links to, this template is, is public. So you can actually go click on the link, copy it into your own Notion notebook. So that's what I recommend. So uh, the link for this Notion notebook is available in the show notes below. So when you click on the template, you will have the option to actually duplicate it. And what I recommend is you duplicate it into your own notebook and then customize it however you want, change it however you like, and then make another duplicate copy. And that way you have sort of a fresh copy that you can use for every campaign that you wanna do. What we'll do is we will, we'll make a fake one right now. We'll click on that duplicate one and it makes a copy. And then we'll click into the copy and we'll say, uh, what will we call this? New campaign. So now I've got a new campaign template. You'll see, you know, it's sitting right there, uh, right next to my other one. And the first thing I'll do, so I, I put a lot of instructions into the template to help you walk through all of the steps. So hopefully the template is relatively self-explanatory. It has a lot of topics about how to use this. I also have like a change log down here that tells you about things that I've updated in the template. I, I don't update it often, but every so often I'll find something like, wow, this is really useful. I want to add this to the template. And I add it into the, the, the change log. So if you ever want to see if things have changed since the last time you used my template, maybe you're between campaigns again, you can go to the original template again, look at the change log, see if anything changed. And I'll show a couple of things that have changed recently. So since I have a new campaign, I don't need to keep all of these uh, notes here, right? I have all this extra stuff that I don't really need. So I'm going to immediately grab this and delete it. I'm just hitting the delete key to, to delete it and uh, get rid of all these notes as well, because really this is what I need, right? So I'm, I'm now all set with this. I also don't need this example session notes. This is an example of what your session notes look like, but I'm going to be creating a new one. So I'm going to, I'm going to delete that one as well. So now I've got all of my, all of my steps here. So uh, at the top, you see this plus sign and it says generate session planning template. This is a single, this is actually a button that you can click. And when you do that, it creates a new session notes template. And here's where I typically say, I'm going to make a one, uh, one December, uh, well, we'll call this a Tuesday D and D. So, uh, you give it a unique name for that session. And, and this page that has been created is a session notes page. So if I go back to my top menu, you'll see that I now have a one December, 2020 Tuesday D and D. Those are my notes for the game that I'm going to be running next. So one of the things you'll want to do is customize your session planning template. So we have this button up here. This is the one that you click in order to generate a new session planning template. And when you do so, it creates one, but you probably want to customize that. So instead of customizing your session template every time you create it, uh, instead you can go to this generate session planning template, click on the little gear, and it shows you what the button, you know, con it's a con configure template button. You don't worry about that. This generate session planning template, that's what it's called. And then in here, it says template, right? And this is the template that it's, that it's copying uh, when it makes a new one. So we click into this session notes template 
area. And this is the template that we're editing. Here, what I'm gonna do is get rid of some of these extra notes in here, because I don't want those showing up every time I create a new one. And we can go in here and we can change things up. So maybe you don't like the review NPC section, we get rid of that. Uh, we don't need this instruction in here because we know what's going on. Uh, we don't need lack in there because lack doesn't show up in every session. That's just really an example. So we get rid of that, right? And so now, and maybe for our for this stuff, like you guys don't need the Avre. You don't use Avre, you can get rid of that. Uh, and session notes, we can we can get rid of the first one. So now we've cleaned it up so that we don't have a bunch of, you know, same thing with length of locations. Let's get rid of this. So we have a bullet there, but we, we don't wanna fill it up with a bunch of default text that we have to delete every single time we use it. Maybe you actually wanna to link to your characters. So we go here and you at and character and we have characters for the new new campaign we click that and now we have a link in here so when it says review the characters we click that and it goes right to the characters right so that's in our template now that the template is saved right it's it's all set and now when we generate a new one uh it opens it up and you'll see like that link is there and all of the cruft is gone right so we've now modified the template so anytime we click that button we have a new version of the template that is exactly the way we want it so these notes are broken out in the eight steps of Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. If you're familiar of the with the steps from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, these are all going to be familiar to you. And of course, as the guy who wrote Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, I have designed the template to fit that model. So my, my hope is that it helps people who are used to that style use that model. However, one of the big things that I talk about in Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master is making it your own. You might not like those eight steps. You might have steps that you don't use. Modify the template. You go in, you change the template, you add the things you want, you remove the things you don't, and you build it around the style that you like. So we have the eight steps here. Uh, we have the characters, we have review the characters. You, really, this is a checkbox of, hey, take do your first step, go take a look at the characters, see who they are, uh, learn about their backgrounds and all, all sorts of things like that. We have a strong start, which is just a text field. You put in, uh, we are, uh, the characters get attacked by fire giants. Right? So we have a strong start. Nothing like a strong start of like getting attacked by fire giants. Uh, so we have uh, scenes. Now, if you're familiar with return, you'll know that the scenes is really one of the steps that we might not always do. I tend to go through the process anyway because I've got the eight steps. I just want to make sure. So you might say fire giant attack, surveil the fort, surveil the giant fort, face the fire giant king. Right? So we, we add just a few scenes. And let's just say that that's going to be the scenes that we've got. Then we have secrets and clues. The fire giants are actually under orders from Raluvan the red dragon. So you add your 10 secrets and clues and we have checkboxes for these. So as you reveal them during your game, you can check them off and say, okay, I've given that secret and clue away. Handy, handy way to keep your secrets and clues. Uh, fantastic locations. I'm probably gonna link to a location page here. Uh, we also have NPCs and you can link to any NPC pages here or you can just type in notes about any NPCs that are really only gonna show up for this, for this function. List of monsters. These are the monsters that are likely to show up. So we might have a fire giant. We might have a fire giant dreadnought, uh, and we have an adult red dragon, right? And the nice thing is you can do here is you can go into your D&D Beyond to fire giant, and we can grab a fire giant page and grab that, and we can go back to our template over here, and we highlight that, and you paste it with control V, and now it's linked. So now if I click on fire giant, I get my fire giant page. Right, I can do. I could do the same thing for the fire giant dreadnought. I could do the same thing for the adult red dragon. Now I have like links to the monsters. Uh, same thing. You can list out your treasure, uh, what treasure you have there, and um, link it to actual treasure records in D and D Beyond. Uh, I don't really store treasure as like a card. I might do it for a special item. I might have a separate page for a piece of treasure. But generally speaking, I'm just listing the treasure out that I think I'm going to give away. And so those are the eight steps, right? We've got our review the characters, the strong start, scenes, secrets and clues, fantastic locations, NPCs, monsters, and treasure. Uh, the last thing I have in here is a scratch pad. And I've been using this primarily because I've been playing online. This is just a place to store any basic text that you have. I use it to track the hit points of monsters or the damage that monsters have taken. Uh, I use it to create a macro for Avre when I'm running in Discord uh, so that I can do initiative with like a single, a single macro uh, Avre command. 
Uh, I also use it for my text-based battle maps. So I'll put, I'll put my text-based battle maps in here or even things like initiative order. Any raw text that I've got, I can throw into this scratch pad and it's, and it's saved there. So that is the, uh, the, the, that's probably the, the primary page that I use in Notion is this session planning page. And this is the one that I'm going to generally refer to when I'm actually running a game. So let me go through the other pages that we have here. The Lazy DM Notion template is really built from two kinds of pages. Uh, one are regular pages and two are database databases. And uh, there are actually a few different kinds of databases, but you'll see them as I, I go into here. So uh, session zero notes are actually a page, right? And in here, this is if you're starting a brand new campaign. These are all the questions I like to uh, ask when I'm generating a new campaign. Again, this all comes from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. If you're familiar with the book, you can see it here. So we have the campaign elevator pitch, like what's this campaign about? And it could be like, stop the ancient red dragon. Uh, it could be kill Tiamat. It could be kill Strahd. Whatever your campaign elevator pitch is for your campaign, you can put it in here. It's the main driver for your campaign. Uh, then we have the six truths. Now, six is arbitrary. It could be four, right? But what are the things that makes this campaign different from the eyes of the player? These are the things you're going to tell your player. This is what makes this campaign different. These are, these are specific things about the world or the, the creatures in the world or uh, current big events that are going on. These are things that the players are going to learn, things that their characters already know about the way the campaign goes. And again, this is all in Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. Uh, you can list out your villains. And for each villain, we're going to create a villain card. And the nice thing about the villain cards is you can then link them into your NPCs and you can do, you can do other things. So that's actually something we're going to put in the campaign database. Uh, we have character options and house rules. You can list them out here. Uh, we have patrons and factions. I like to use group patrons. This is sort of a new feature of D&D that they've included in Eberron, Rising of the Last War, and in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Uh, which is the idea of who is the primary patron of all of the characters. It's a really handy way to get all your characters together under a single group. And you can write about it here. Uh, safety tools. What are the safety tools that you use for your game? Lines and veils, X cards. Uh, what, what is the, what is like the movie rating for your, for your campaign? I, I tend to like campaigns that are set at sort of a PG 13 level. Uh, and then I reference a, a, an excellent guide called Consent in Gaming by Money Cook Games. It's free that can talk all about this sort of thing. So the main thing is you want to make sure that all the players that are in your game are comfortable with the material that they are going to be exposed to during the game, both by you and by the other players there. And then uh, this is an idea I really liked, which is what, what inspires the campaign? What movies, what books, what TV shows, what fiction, what art? What are the things that uh, inspire you uh, to go along the campaign's themes? And you can link them here, link movie titles, link books, throw actual artwork in here. This is sort of a catch-all to, to get you uh, uh, inspired by, by all this sort of stuff. So I'm going to skip down now. We have a bunch of other pages, characters, NPCs, locations, villains, items, uh, stars and wishes, old session notes and campaign. But I'm going to talk about the campaign database. So uh, aside from pages like our session planning document, our session planning page, almost everything else is kept inside of this thing known as the campaign database. Right? And the campaign database holds uh, a variety of different things, but it holds NPCs, villains, items, and locations. And the idea with, these, um, with, the, with the database is that you can store uh, all kinds of different things. So you have like Rose Point Manor and you can throw a map directly in here. Uh, you can have any, any information about a location you can put in here. One thing I like to do is make sure that every one of the records inside the campaign database has an image. And that way you can view it as a thumbnail. So I have this character named Indithir. We have this information about the NPC Indithir. We have a nice picture of Indithir in here. Uh, and you'll see that we have tags and the tags are what define what kind of, what kind of uh, entry this particular page is. Now the difference between like a database card and a page is actually pretty small. Uh, the only real difference is that a database entry has fields that you can put in. So you'll see this particularly with the character database, which I'll get to in a second. Uh, for most everything else, I only have them as tags so that you can say something is both an NPC and a villain, or you could actually have a villain and an item. So all of that is stored in the campaign database. Most of the time, you're not dealing directly with the campaign database. You're going to be going to um, one of these other views of the database. So an example are NPCs. If you go to the NPC card, you see all of the NPCs that are inside the campaign database. This is a filtered view, right? So you see it has like the little filtered tag here. And we're saying we've only shown objects that have a tag of NPC. 
So that way the NPCs are always view, view tags. If you have a new NPC when you create, you, you create new and you say my new NPC. You put whatever information in here you want. It's already tagged. And then you put an image in and then it will show up as an icon. So you'll see it doesn't show up with an icon because I didn't bother to throw a piece of art in there yet. So I'm going to delete that. So that's how you can create a new NPC and also how to view your NPCs. And as you saw before, so we had an NPC named Indithir, right? Uh, yeah. So if I go back into my campaign notes, I can go down to NPCs and I can type at, I do the at sign and I'm going to type like in IND and I have Indithir and you see this Indithir new campaign uh, is in there. So now I have a link in my NPC section and it goes straight to the Indithir link. And this is, this is really where the power comes in that if every object is sort of a card and I can click to any of those cards by using the at sign and making a link. And then in my, in my actual game notes, uh, I have, I have links to all this. So I have another one called lack. Lack is actually a villain and an item. It's a, it's a sentient magic orb. Uh, and I have a card for Lack that has all of the information about Lack and a picture of Lack, but I can link to it in my uh, in my notes. Very handy tool. So I have the same thing for locations. This shows all of the locations that I have in here. Uh, I have the same thing for villains. If I want to see all of the villains that I have, these are all filters. They're all views that are filtering the campaign database based on the tags uh, that fit that view. So in case I have a villain tag, and then I have an item tag. Lack is the only item, both a villain and an item. So, uh, but let's go back up to characters. So characters is actually its own database. Uh, it's its own page. And uh, my reason for that is I have a lot of other fields for characters. What I wanted to have here is the equivalent, I'm actually gonna shrink my, my side window here, uh, is that I have a, I wanted to have sort of a DM screen of character information. So I have the name of the character. Uh, I have the, the, the skills that a, uh, a character is trained in. I have their passive perception, their passive investigation, their passive insight. Uh, I have a link to their D&D Beyond character sheet, really handy. And then I have, this is something new that I've added, what languages they're, they're trained in. So uh, now I can, I can look at it and very easily see uh, who's trained in Arcana, and I know Quinfer, and both Quinfer and Odell are trained in Arcana. Uh, does anybody speak um, uh, Infernal? And I can look and say, ah, yes, Quinfer speaks Infernal. So I can, I can review that without having to ask them, hey, what languages do you know? I can say, Quinfer, because you speak Infernal, you can hear X, right? And having this kind of information on hand uh, at a quick reference is really, really handy. So uh, I really like this. And if I want to add a new character, again, I just go down to New. And uh, it actually can create a record in here, or I can open it as a page and I can fill in new character. And it already has the skills, so I can say they're trained in this and this and this. Uh, I can give their, you know, their passive insight and perception and everything like that. I can go down to languages. I, I also have all the default languages in here, but I can always add a new one. So if there, there's a lot of weird languages and sometimes a, a character will learn a weird language, I can always add one in. Uh, so like quarry, right? A character might learn quarry. Now, when I add that tag, now quarry uh, is one of the options, right? So really handy for uh, keeping track of all that sort of stuff. Uh, but I'm not gonna worry about that. So we're going to delete that record. So characters is a separate database from the campaign database. That's one change I've made since I started this whole thing. And that's because characters have so much more information uh, that's, really, that's really useful uh, uh, to track with them. So uh, I've talked about NPCs and locations, villains, and items. Those are the four views into the campaign database. So if I want to see what NPCs are going on, uh, I have them. So these could get very large. So I'll give an example. Here is my Eberron. Uh, this is the campaign notebook that I use for my Eberron games, which has now been going on for about nine months. And if I go into the NPC section here, you'll see I've got dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of NPCs. So I'm not likely to go... Um, I'm not likely to sort through here to find NPCs. Every so often I will. Uh, my, I, I sort this based on most recently created so that the newest NPCs are at the top because the newest one you create are, are likely the ones you're gonna be referring to most often. So you can see how, this, how these databases can get big. Uh, locations, same thing. Lots and lots and lots of locations. Every one of them, I try to put either a map or an image of some sort for any location I've got. But as your campaigns go on, these notebooks are going to get bigger and bigger, which is cool, right? And it's great to have like this reference of all the old stuff that you had. 
Uh, it's a really fun way to kind of have your campaign get bigger and bigger, you know, wider and wider. Uh, so I have an optional page in here called Stars and Wishes. This is actually another database. It's actually a, a, a table that's stored in here. And the idea here is that you can ask your group every so often. You probably don't want to hit them every, every session, but maybe every couple of, you know, every four or five sessions, you might say, so uh, let's talk about our stars and wishes. And a star is anything that the player has really enjoyed uh, that has happened in the game or happened with their character or that they've enjoyed from another character. And a wish is anything that they're hoping to have happen in the campaign or happen with their character or anything like that. And so you ask each player, like, what is one thing that you really liked from the campaign so far? What's one thing that really got your attention? And what one thing would you really like to see happen? And you can record it in here, right? You can, you can put in a date for when you get it, which player asked it, star and wish, and then what the feedback was. And you can sort of just keep track of that as you go. Uh, so when I have, the, so I have this old session notes section, and this is actually empty to begin with. But the idea is once your session is complete, you can take the session that you've run and you drag it down to old session notes, and that's sort of your archive right? And now you can archive all of your old session notes in one place. Going once again back to my Eberron campaign notes, I have the old adventures section. And in here, you can see I have every one of the session notes uh, that I've had. And I can go reference and I've done this, like what happened in the Wednesday game back in October, right? And I can click and see here are my session notes. Here are the secrets and clues that I had. Here's the locations. Oh yeah, that's right. This is when they were back at the Dam of Galifarian Kings. What monsters did they, they face? Like sometimes they have weird monsters that they faced, and it's really nice to um, it's really nice to be able to look back and see what happened in previous sessions. So that is pretty much everything uh, that exists in the campaign notebook. There are a couple of other things that I wanted to talk about. One is the the value of art. So I've included a bunch of artwork that uh, comes from other books that I've written. So the Lazy Dungeon Master, uh, the Lazy Dungeon Master's workbook, Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master, Fantastic Locations, Fantastic Adventures, and Ruins of the Grendel Root. So like when you click on these, you'll see artwork. This is some artwork from, from Fantastic Adventures. Uh, I have artwork from, here's one from um, Ruins of the Grendel Root. And you can change all of these. So you can decide, you know, like for items, I want to have something a little bit different or like we'll go down to villains, right? And you say, this is my villain. But if I, if you, you can change it based on your campaign that you're running. So I'll show an example. Here is my Descent into Avernus campaign. And I went through and put all kinds of Avernus artwork behind here. So my NPCs, you know, I've got pictures. There, there's uh, Mad Maggie, right, in the back. Um, if I go to my villains, you know, I've got some nice artwork here. I really want to make the campaign notebook feel right for the campaign. It, it helps get my head in the game when I'm uh, running them. So, you know, for my characters, I have Lulu and the characters all in a boat. So um, the nice thing is if you're using like D&D Beyond, you can grab the artwork from D&D Beyond and put it into your Notion notebook for your own personal use, right? Not, not something that you can broadcast everywhere. But for your own use, uh, it's a really nice way to sort of get your head into the campaign. Uh, I'm just starting to think about my Rhyme of the Frost Maiden campaign, but I've already gone through and added in a bunch of Rhyme of the Frost Maiden uh, artwork uh, in here that kind of, you know, shows me what I'm running. And if you're running multiple campaigns, it's really nice to have different, very different artwork for the campaigns you're running. Customize the artwork to fit it. Uh, and like I described before, customize the notebook to fit the style that you like. There are going to be things you want to track that I'm not tracking in here. There are going to be things that I'm tracking in here that aren't really that useful to you. So what I recommend is downloading the template, modify the template to fit the style that you use to fit the, 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 the prep style that you use, and then keep that one as your template and then make a copy. And I would also uh, ask you to drop into the Sly Flourish Discord channel. The uh, links are in the, note below, the, the notes below. And tell me what you changed because some of the things that I've changed in here, I got from other players and other DMs who have said, it would be really handy if I had this here. Uh, the whole idea of adding languages to the characters came from one of the people that have been using Notion before. And I was like, man, that's an outstanding idea and I wanna add that in. So that's been, that's been very, very helpful. The last thing I'd like to talk about is exporting your notebook. Notion has one major problem, and that is that it doesn't have an offline mode. You have to be online to get a hold of your notebooks. Now, I've been running all my games online anyway, so if I'm not online, I'm not playing D&D anyway. And so far, I think only about one time in the past 
six months or so have I had any trouble getting a hold of my notebooks. But if you want to have an offline mode, there's a way to do it. And the way to do it is to download to download your notebook. So you can go up to the, in the upper right-hand corner, uh, there's that dot, 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 and you can click that and you can go down to export, right? And what you want to do is you want to include all your sub pages in here. And what I like to do is the HTML version. And that way I can load it into a browser and all the links and everything will work inside of a browser. So you go in here and you hit export and it tells you it's going to take a little time, especially if you have a lot of pages. And I often have uh, a lot of pages going. Uh, for this one, it should be relatively small. So when you open it up, you have a zip file. Uh, and the zip file will contain all of the HTML pages in it. And you can see now I have an HTML version of it. And I can click like December 1, and I have my notes in here. Now, I can't modify them because they're all in HTML. But I have them handy. So if you're ever worried about having your notes on hand, then when you're done mucking around with your whole campaign and you've got it where you want it, you can export it and save it locally. And now you've got a local copy of it. And what I what I found is that the HTML version, uh, if I click on lack, I've got lack. Uh, the HTML version is probably the easiest version to use. Uh, the one tricky bit is that it doesn't do databases particularly well. So if you click on NPCs, it has everybody in there, right? So uh, it doesn't do the filtering uh, for those views for NPCs, locations, villains, and items. The filtering doesn't work in um, the export. Uh, it's going to show everything that's there. Uh, same thing with the campaign database. It doesn't show them in that nice card view. It shows them as a list. But you can click on them and still get it everything you want so it means everything's a little bit more complicated uh but it still is better to have an offline mode uh, than to have nothing at all if you uh for some reason can't get online there's one other feature that notion has added recently that i just really love it's something i really hoped that they would add and they did and it works really well and that's backlinking so uh, i'm going to go over to my eberron notebook because my eberron notebook has uh, again, it's six months worth of campaign stuff in there. So I've got things everywhere. I've got dozens of NPCs. And I'm going to show an example of backlinking. So if I go in here and I link to something, uh, like I'm going to link to Lack, good old Lack. And in Lack, uh, I have this link to Lack. Now, if I go to Lack, I just created a link to go to Lack. I typed at Lack. I viewed it in the list. Click it. It creates a link that goes internally. Really, really nice. And if I click on that, uh, I get the LAC page, but you can see that LAC has 24 backlinks, right? So I can open that up and it shows me every one of the pages that LAC was connected to. And you can see that I've LAC, I've connected to LAC, there's 14 more, well, look at all these, uh, that I've connected to LAC in many of my game notes, but then there's also like, huh, I've connected, who's Chris and Vroon and Zine and Zin, Sin and Thrine and Koratash and the Emissaries. I can click on that and it shows me uh, information about uh, the emissaries of the Dreaming Dark, which Black is one of the emissaries. So I have all of these links in here. If I click on Chris, Chris has 10 backlinks to all of the other five or to all of the other emissaries, plus the, the emissaries hub page, plus all of the notes that I've linked to. So anytime you link to a page internally, it creates a backlink to tell you that this page was linked to by that page. It's a really easy way to navigate back and forth between your material. And it's a, it's a good way to sort of not get lost in your own stuff. That once you create a link one way, another link is linking back using this, this backlinks link. So there's, there's times where you haven't created an NPC uh, card yet in your database, but you're in the middle of your session notes. You don't want to drop all the way out, go into the database, create a new record. So here's a trick for creating an NPC inline and then adding it to your campaign database. So let's say I have a new uh, NPC uh, called uh, Dark Ember, right? So what I'm going to do is I, I type the at sign as though I'm going to link to one, and I say Dark Ember is my NPC. And now I say there's a new dark member page in, right? And I'm going to click that and I'm going to add it to my new campaign uh, link there. And now I've got a page for this for this new NPC, right? But it's it, the problem is it actually shows up at the bottom of my root level pages. It's not a database entry yet. But one move, I can grab dark ember and copy it into the campaign database. Boom. And now dark ember is a thing here. It has the tags. I can say it's an NPC and I'm done. So as you can see, I'm a huge fan of Notion for uh, lazy dungeon mastering and lazy DM prep. 
Uh, I was normally like a, very much a pen and paper guy. Uh, I also used like text pages. I, uh, for a long time, I used uh, a text editor to do my show notes. And uh, I got clued into this. Uh, a friend of mine, my friend Juliet, told me about it. And I tried it out. And man, it feels great. And it, the whole idea of interlinking cards, of connecting your NPCs and your locations, uh, it's made it faster. Uh, and game prep is now easier for me to do. And also a lot more fun. So I'm I'm a big fan. Notion is great. It's free. It's web based. It works on all platforms. It's a fantastic tool. I really like it. So I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you did and you enjoyed this video, uh, you can help support videos like this by going to Patreon.com/slash/LifeFlourish and become a patron. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day.